Hello my friends and welcome back once again to Brotherhood of the Bat Collectibles. My name's Chris, I'm the Batman Statue Collector and on this channel we like to do high-end statue collecting reviews, unboxing statue chats, live content like Rogues Gallery Live. Thank you so very much for joining me today because look at what we have in the Batcave. That's right, not one, not two, but we now have the third piece from XM Studios in the Batcave. It's absolutely insane to think that Three weeks ago, I didn't have any of these things, and now I've got three. It's absolutely incredible, and I want to give a big shout out right off the bat to collector Joe Latore. You've probably seen him in the chat on Rogues Gallery Live. He's a phenomenal collector, and I have now purchased this, Deathstroke, and now also Joker coming from him. And so I want to give him a big shout out. Absolutely phenomenal collector. He made me some just incredible deals. So thank you, Joe, from the bottom of my heart to allow me to add these pieces to my collection, to be able to see them, to be able to see the artistry here in person. Now I'm going to say this though. I don't know about Harley Quinn yet. She was one that I was real hesitant to get. And Joe made me an offer I couldn't refuse. I wanted to see her in person. I wanted to see what I thought. Because is she very samurai? Mm, that's subjective, right? Pink? Pink in the Batcave? Are you kidding me? Does it belong here? I'm thinking not really. And so I don't know for sure how I feel yet about this Harley Quinn. Is she phenomenal? Yes. Is she a beautiful piece of art? Yes. But does she fit in with the samurai line like I want it to fit in? Of course, I am wanting to get characters like Bane, Poison Ivy, and if I add those characters and add a little bit more color, will she fit in better? I don't know. Like right now, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you, do you feel like she fits in? That's very hard to decide right now. So by the end of this video, I'm hoping I have a better idea of how much I love her or how much I don't. I, I really don't know yet. But I think in my personal opinion, I'm going to need to see more pieces. But is there any question this is a beautiful piece of art? No. She's very, very well done. She's kind of half samurai and kind of half not. And I think that's one big reason why not everybody loves this piece. And again, a pink scooter in the Batcave, mm, I'm still not 100% sold on that. So again, I'm going to need your advice by the end of this video for sure. Uh, before we do all that though, if you are watching for the very first time, I really think you're going to enjoy this content. So please subscribe. Um, and again, so many of you, I think like 46% of you, do not subscribe to these videos. You watch them but you're not a subscriber, please do me a favor and subscribe. It really does help. We are on our road to 35K. Once we get there, I have a big, big giveaway, guys. You are not going to want to miss it. One of our best giveaways we've ever done here on the channel. I cannot wait to share what that's going to be. Um, but anyway, I'm going to do uh, my full review. I've got close-ups of the face sculpts um, and a few other surprises here and there. So without further ado, let's check it out. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the portraits first. Obviously, this is going to be the, uh, the standard Harley. Um, beautiful portrait. Obviously, you see the blue and the pink eyeshadow, the shiny, luscious lips, which looks great. Uh, I'm very impressed with the texturing on her hair. I think that looks really nice. Obviously, you have the, the black and the red on each side, and you have that great Harley Quinn collar. Uh, and of course the diamonds on the side. But again, this is definitely that more traditional looking Harley. This is, uh, I think, probably the most popular head sculpt. Uh, but I'm not sure yet if it's my favorite yet or not. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the second portrait. This one seems to be probably the least liked in the community at least. But it is, I think it's actually really quite well done. Um, it's definitely a more traditional samurai look, which is definitely something that I am interested in. Just because it adds some difference to the collection, it's not just that same old, same old Harley. I got the Dynamite Six there. Again, it's just a very fun look. But again, I can understand why it's not everybody's favorite. But I think it's beautifully painted. Now, next up is, I think, probably my favorite, and this is definitely a crazy Harley. It's definitely kind of a cross between regular Harley and Samurai Harley. Obviously you have this great helmet here. You have the Jester look. You have It's kind of steampunk a little bit with the goggles. Um, you know, but again, it definitely is more Samurai looking. So I think that's why I like this one. I also like how devious she looks with the black paint. And I also really like the lips. Now the lips are not just black. They're a black and red underneath. So that, you know, that's really nice. Obviously you have the collar again, but 
Again, I think all three portraits look really great, but I, I'm tending to lean toward this one I think is my favorite, but I'm anxious to get them on the statue and show you uh, all the details in uh, my full review. Oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to show you before we go to the review is the name plaques. This is my first piece that actually came with a name plaque. Um, and I believe you get these um, if you uh, order by a certain time. So again, they're just really nice. They come in a really nice box. Um, there's no number on it. I think that would have been neat if it had a yeah, if it had a matching number, but that's okay that it doesn't. It does have like this uh, flap, so you can you know set it down flat on a table, and that's really cool. But I just want to show you that too. So okay, now we'll get to the full review. All right, guys, so I have Harley here set up on the table, and this is obviously just one of her looks. Uh, we'll start with this look, and we'll pan down, and of course, we'll work our way up from the base like we always do here. Now, the base is really cool. Obviously, it's got kind of a rock base look. Um, there is some nice muddy elements to it, which is great. Um, and then, of course, you also have some grays. You have some tans here. Um, I feel like there are L L areas, I guess you could say, that to me are a little flat. I feel like maybe some of these areas in the back could have been painted a little bit better, but overall I'm, I'm pleased. Um, you even notice some green areas that are very um, subtle. Um, you know, it's hard to see with the eye, but obviously that could be like some moss or something. And again, it's the back sides, so you're really not gonna pay much attention to it. But you, again, you have some of those browns, those tans, and then all of the gray elements. But my favorite part of the base is the cobbled stone. I love that. Again, it just feels very ancient to me, like it's maybe going over a bridge or something. And I just really appreciate that. Um, I think overall the bases have been really impressive with the XM pieces. Somebody asked me the other day, do I like the Prime 1 bases better or the XM bases? And so far, I love the the um, the art direction of the XM bases. I feel like maybe Prime One has a little bit more detail in texture in their bases, but again, I, overall, uh, I'm very pleased uh, with what I'm seeing here. But again, I love the cobbled streets. That's really fun, right? Um, okay, let's go ahead and start with the figure uh, itself. Now, obviously, you have these great boots here, uh, red and black elements. You have spikes in her toes, which is cool, and that's different than her other boots. So both boots are different, which I like, and also both legs are different because this has a sock um, that goes all the way up, a thigh-high sock, which is really a great element, obviously, into her um, skater pads. And again, it's a skater look, but she doesn't have skates on. So again, it's kind of a nod a little bit. Um, and that is one of the biggest nitpicks. People, you know, think that she's very samurai up top and not samurai at all down below. And I, I can understand that. Um, obviously she has some great, these are either buttons or painted stone. I, I like to think of them as painted stone because I feel like that would be maybe more appropriate for the time period, but there's a bone, there's a cat and a star. And then on the other leg, obviously, again, you have a great boot element, really shiny, nice black. And then of course, this one you have bandages. So you have bandages sculpted instead of the sock, but you still have some of those great painted elements as well. Cat and heart, so that's neat. And again, you have that great knee pad. Obviously the pink does translate down to the motor scooter. I will talk about my thoughts on the pink elements here in just a moment. But uh, let's, let's look at the motor scooter. So uh, obviously that's a big part of it and that's uh, probably the number one thing that people, if they didn't buy this, that's what they don't like, um, is the scooter. And that's definitely what held me off as well. I don't really want pink in my Batman collection, but uh, again, I will give you my final thoughts um, if I feel like this has a, has a place. I absolutely love this. So this obviously keys in right here, but I love the fact that it's like held on by this piece of cloth. Um, it just looks very hodgepodge, and that's really a great element. Uh, obviously, this is fully sculpted, but it's cool. You have the red tires, the red rims. Uh, goes into that great Joker emblem right there, which is really phenomenal. Adds a really nice touch. Got a flower on the back, painted. Obviously, you also have some Easter eggs here. Uh, when you open up the gas lid here, uh, you got some dynamite sticking out, and also just a round bomb, which is really cool. And these are actually like real you know, like real fabric elements. So that's nice. It adds a little bit of realism there. As we spin it around, obviously you're gonna again see that great motor scooter elements there. Um, the red rim, you have the, uh, the diamonds here as well, hand painted on there, dripping, wet paint, I like that. Uh, you have the blue teal elements as well. And then you do also have the Harley Quinn and Loves Mr. J. I feel like that kind of dates the piece a little bit because Harley isn't with Mr. J much anymore. 
but it's on the back side, so if you don't like it, you don't have to see it. Uh, you also have the Easter egg hidden bat back here, which is nice for her protection. I think that's great. And then obviously some more great detail there on the tire. It just looks fantastic. Really well sculpted. And then you have the fun element on the front. You have kind of the, the, the bowl look. You have the hand-painted mouth. And then, of course, those headlights with the bull horns. So, again, it's just very whimsical. Um, but it, to me, it doesn't really fit the samurai motif. And again, I, I feel that's, again, that's the big nitpick. Now, speaking of samurai, like this looks very samurai to me. I love this. I love the lantern, which is really nice. It's one of my favorite parts of the statue. Definitely feels traditional. Um, I, I will kind of, and maybe I have this wrong. Whoops, I just put that off there. Um, so you can put batteries in here, but I cannot get the batteries in. Like it's very difficult. There's not a compartment to shut it and hold the batteries in. So I'm really struggling with that. I just cannot figure it out. <coughs> so that's been a little annoying to me. And again, maybe I just have it wrong. Um, also, you notice I knocked this out. Uh, obviously these do, uh, this is plastic and it does key in. There's like little holes right there. And so those just literally key in with, with a tension fit. Uh, you do have to be careful because these are, you know, plastic, they are brittle. So you have to be careful. But obviously I easily knocked one out. So again, just don't, don't go touching your leaves, I guess. Um, but again, I just love this corner of the base. Uh, you also have this great element here with some stuffed animals, obviously a joker um, and Bud and Lou. Let's spin it around so you can see both of them. Um, it's whimsical. Again, it's not my favorite part. I wish I could take it out. Uh, you actually can take it out of there. Um, but when you do, obviously, again, I'm going to knock over those plants. It does leave a bit of a hole there. So, I mean, you can, if you don't like that look, I mean, you could leave it out. But... Obviously, it's meant just to key in there, and it's a very nice, very strong magnet there, which is cool. Um, as we move up the figure itself, um, you're going to again notice this great detail. I really like the Joker on that. I think that's nice in the belt area. Again, really crisp and clean black and red elements. Obviously, she has kind of some biker shorts on underneath. So that's nice. Um, this one that I actually bought, uh, again, I did buy it secondhand. I knew this going in. Um, this one does have a, uh, a bit of a broken element there. Part of her black pants did break off. But again, the way to display her is mostly like this. So it doesn't really bother me any. But that was one area that uh, did, did uh, break. And I knew about that break. And again, uh, Joe offered me a, a fantastic price for this one. So again, thank you to Joe. Um, so this obviously is really, really cool here. This is part of her mallet and this is actually a, um, a Japanese game where, you know, you have the stick and you try to flip the ball into the, uh, into the hole. And that's exactly what this is. It's meant to be that same game. Although this one has spikes, uh, but it's meant to, you know, you flip it up and you catch it in there like that. Um, but I, I, th I think that was really cool. Obviously you have the Joker emblem there as well with the green elements and the red elements, which is nice. And this, this rope is, is a real twine. Um, as you go up into the actual mallet, that is sculpted, but the twine itself is real. Obviously it adds a little bit of movement too, if you move it. So that's cool, I like that. That's really neat. Uh, obviously the paint in the chest area is really nice. Um, it, again, it's cold cast porcelain but it adds some nice definition in the chest area. Uh, it's a sexy pose with her, you know, kind of coming off the shoulder, kind of a bikini top, which is nice. But again, this is fully sculpted. And again, from, you know, up here, it's definitely more of a traditional samurai look. And again, down below, there's not a ton of, tr there's not a ton of that look. And again, that's been one of the biggest nitpicks of this piece in the community that I've seen. Um, you know, not only that part, but then also not everybody likes the pink. Uh, it's definitely a different look for sure. Um, but I know why they did that. They did that to match up the Catwoman, which has the purple motorcycle. So that's why they did this. Um, I would still like to see them maybe do another Harley without the motorcycle. And maybe they will. Um, you know, again, pink is, it's hard for me to swallow pink in this collection. 
because my collection is very dark. Of course, you do have color back there with some oranges and some greens, but not any pink in my collection for sure. Uh, you do have the, the great top here. Uh, the handlebars uh, are a little tricky to get in. You just have to make sure you have them angled right. Um, but it wasn't that bad at all. But that's how they're supposed to go in, just like that. And obviously it has the, like the little um, wire that goes in there as well. So that's cool. Uh, let's see. What else do we want to look at here? Uh, let's look at her hands. Obviously, you have the uh, the pink there again that ties the scooter in. You have the uh, bracelet. You have the mallet itself, which is cool. And then again, all of the great black and red elements there as well on the chest. And again, the, the paint's really nice on the chest. That, of course, goes into the other hand. And that's really nice. Beautifully painted. Uh, that hand does key in. And you just put the, uh, the mallet back behind her through her to her hand here. So that's cool. Let me show you some kind of different angles of her there. Kind of the back side. Let's give you kind of a full 360 spin here. And then we'll talk about the face. So this is face sculpt number one. This is definitely the more Harley of the face sculpts. Uh, I like this one. I don't know if it's my favorite. Um, I know most people display her with this way. But I do think it's a cute look for sure. Obviously, you got that great smile, the great eyes. Got the black and the red in her hair with the bows. So again, that's just a fun look. It's a, it's a nice look. It's definitely the most Harley of the looks. Okay, let me kind of show you what that looks like with that head. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and switch it for the next look. Again, this is kind of somewhere in the middle. This is kind of a half samurai, half Harley, okay? So this is the next look, and I think this is my favorite look, I think. Um, I really like it. It's very kind of dark and devious. Obviously, you have that great makeup with the black around her eyes, but it has a helmet here that's kind of that jester look. Again, it's very kind of sinister looking, like she's really up to no good. Definitely changes the look of the statue. All three portraits are looking a little bit different uh, in terms of w what direction they're looking in. So that does affect how you display the bike and how you display the base. But I do really like this portrait. Again, I feel like it's very, you know, very sinister looking, beautifully painted. Definitely gives it a little bit darker of a vibe. Whereas the, uh, the one I just showed you was more kind of fun and whimsical, cute. This one's definitely more devious, which is what I like. I like the more samurai look, actually. If I just want a Harley, I would just buy a comic book Harley. Um, so I do like that, the, that they offer some variety. Uh, so the next one I'm going to show you is probably the least liked in the community, but actually I really like it. Uh, let me show you the next one. So the last portrait is the uh, geisha look. And again, I know it's not everybody's favorite, but I kind of like it just because it is so samurai looking to me. Um, it's subtle Harley, but one thing I love is the dynamite sticks in her hair. Uh, I don't know if that's, you know, very commonly pointed out, but I really like the dynamite sticks. I think that's nice. I think her hair is well sculpted. And again, like, she is just so brightly obnoxious, I guess you could say, you know, with the pink, that I feel like this really kind of ties it in a little bit more to give you that samurai look. Um, so again, I, I don't know. I don't know which one. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of feeling like I like this one maybe a little bit better than that first one. Um, just because it is a little bit more samurai, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something different in my collection. Again, I don't, don't want just a regular Harley. Um, so I do think that looks good. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I like it. I like that portrait. Um, and I feel like maybe it fits in a little bit better with my Batman and Deathstroke, but chances are I'll probably go with number two head sculpt that I showed you. But anyway, um, uh, those are the only swap outs. There are no other swap outs other than the head sculpts. So what you see is what you get here. Um, but it's a really fun statue. And again, all three portraits look really great. And again, they all three change the look of the statue uh, quite a bit. All right, guys, so it's time to do some measuring here and see kind of what we have. Obviously, she's a, a fairly wide statue, so we're going to measure the width first. And to the top of the chin, it's about 19 inches. So it's a, a sizable piece. It's not as big as the Catwoman from what, I, what I've heard. But again, she is going to take up a little bit of width for sure. Depth-wise, again, she's actually kind of deep, but not too, too bad. She's about... Oh, 
if you talk about the top of the plant, you're, you're looking at about 14 inches. If you're letting the plant you know, go over the edge of a shelf, you're looking at more like 11. So the plant definitely adds a little bit something there. Height wise, to the top of her helmet there, we're looking at about 18 inches tall. So again, she's not a really massive piece, but depending on how you display her, also depending on how you have the head sculpts, because again, the different head sculpts, they're different angles on her body. So it really, it could depend a little bit on how you rotate the statue itself. But again, a nice footprint. It's not gonna take up a tremendous amount of room, but it is a little bit wide. Alright guys, so there you have my thoughts and opinions on this Harley Quinn again from XM Studios. And again, I do want to put it over to you guys because I'm still really struggling. Does she fit into this collection? Does she fit in, into this display? I want this display to be something unique, something special. Does she add value to it? Or do you think she distracts from it? I'm really having a hard time. Again, I have been looking at her for a little bit now and trying to figure out if she has this place and again I do kind of wonder if I add more pieces if then she will fit in even more I just don't know if she fits in with just these three or should I just have left it Batman and Deathstroke um, again I do want Bane I really want Ivy Catwoman I'm kind of on the fence about but I do think if I got Catwoman it would probably balance her out a little bit more so again a lot of this is really expensive these pieces that I want are a lot of money $1,500, $2,000 each because they're older and I slept on it, <clears throat> you know, I shouldn't have done that. But I just wasn't there. I wasn't there yet. I think this is a phenomenal statue. In terms of quality, I'm going to give this one just, just for sheer beauty and for sheer artistly, artistry, I'm going to give this a 9.2 out of 10. Um, it's not the highest score I've ever given. It's not the lowest score. I think obviously the pink bothers me a bit. Um, it's just, again, it's not very Batcave 
E to me. So, I don't know, again, I'm kind of struggling with this one a little bit. Um, and I know what you're saying, you're saying, uh-oh, Chris will have this gone within a week. No, I'm not going to have this one gone in a week. I'm going to, you know, hopefully get more pieces in and then judge then at that point. Um, I don't think she's ever going to be my favorite in the Samurai line. I think probably Batman will be. Uh, maybe Ivy if I have a chance to get her, because I'm really, really hoping I find an Ivy. But I do think that she has a place in this collection. I'm just not sure yet if we're there yet. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense to anybody. Uh, I'm still optimistic, but I do think it's a phenomenal statue. I wouldn't hesitate to get it, especially if you're a Harley Quinn fan, uh, or if you're collecting the entire line no matter what. And I don't know, maybe XM will do another Harley Quinn down the road. I don't know. We'll see. But the pink does bother me. Again, I'm going to be honest about that. Um, but, you know, it's one of those pieces that maybe might grow on me a bit. Um, and I think it will over time. I just need to get used to color in the cave. Again, I think that's my biggest thing is, like, I'm just not used to color. I don't have any color. I've got little shades of purple, shades of, like, muted green. That's it. Not a lot of color in the collection. So maybe a little bit of burnt orange. You know, you know how it is. Um, but anyway, I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you guys think? Do you feel like she has a place in the collection? I, I really want to know your thoughts. Thanks again to Joe for selling me this. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And like I said, at the very least, I'm just so glad that I get to see these things in person to be able to appreciate how great the art is. Because um, again, I slept on XM for way too long. I shouldn't have. It's my own fault. I regret that now. But I'm just so glad to finally be able to appreciate the art. It is an honor, a pleasure to own. Without a doubt. Absolutely fantastic. Um, if you are new here, guys, please make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, click the notification bell. Make sure you choose all. Click the join button down below for early access to our videos. That does help support the channel tremendously if you want to go above and beyond to help us support that way. Um, again, 46% of you-ish, somewhere in there, are not watchers, or not subscribers. You're watchers, but you're not subscribers. So please make sure you uh, subscribe. That really does help us out. And again, just thank you for taking time out of your day to watch me ramble on about statue collecting. Thank you very much again. I really think this is a phenomenal piece. But again, I do want to know your thoughts. Does she have a place in this collection? Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon for the Joker unboxing and the Joker review. Cannot wait. Joker Orochi, fantastic piece. I've actually already had it in the Batcave once. This is my second go around, so I can't wait to see it again. And again, just thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon right here in the Batcave. Bye, everybody. Hey guys, thank you so very much for watching today. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button right here on the screen and check out these two awesome videos. I think you're going to love them. And also please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I would love to have you join in all the fun. Thank you guys so very much for watching. See you in the Batcave.